In this video, I want to show you how you can create rankings within your subgroups so that you can create your latest unique value from each of those subgroups. It sounds a little bit confusing from my explanations. I'm going to show you a context through a real life scenario to show you why it's important to learn in the first place. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So this video was inspired by a problem that I faced and solved during work. So let me show you the scenario here. So here we basically have a list of records of all the employees within the company. So to simplify this scenario, we're only looking at two employees and we're just looking at a couple of informations about the employees, such as their name or their position. And you'll notice that in this table, we have multiple values for the employees for each of the rows. And that is supposed to signify that events have changed in their record. So you will see that, for example, Jane Smith uh, was a department head, I uh, still is a department head, but you'll see that on their second uh, entry here, you'll see this is the most recent record, which is effective from the 3rd of January. And that is because they got married. So they've had to change their full name to something else. And this would be their latest record. And this is the type of data set that you will get if you work a lot with SAP or success factors, uh, because it gives you the version history of what's changed in that employee record. So it shows you at a point in time, what they had. So Jane Smith, as of the 1st of January, her full name was still Jane Smith, but on the 3rd of January, they changed her full name to something else. And the task that I had to do in this Power BI report is to get the list of unique employees and their latest record. At first, you're probably thinking, well, this task should be pretty simple because actually in Power Query, you have the ability to remove duplicates from your table. So if you just use that, you will just get a unique list of all the people in your table. So that's that. However, if you haven't noticed yet, what it's done is it's grabbed the first instance of all the employees entries in your table. So for example, we know that the latest record for Jane Smith was that she changed her name to something else. However, this list doesn't do that. It just grabs the first record that we have for Jane Smith, irregardless of what was the latest effective start date for that person. And just to show that I'm going to go back one step uh, before and you'll see that this is actually what we want to get for Jane Smith, which is their latest record um, with the start date of the basically the, the latest dates with their right full name. Same thing with Adam Perez, you'll notice that although it does say it's sales coordinator from the 6th to the uh, 1st of February, you'll notice that it's not quite the latest value that we have for him. So you'll see that Adam Perez, uh, the latest record is from the 2nd of February to the 3rd of February, which is what we wanted to get basically because this is the latest record that we have for this employee. So how do we do that? First, let's remove this step to remove the duplicates to go back to the very beginning. And now let's go to home and click group by pretty simple. So from here, we're just going to leave employee ID. And in the new column name, we're going to create a new column, we'll just name it all. And under the operation, we'll just change that to all rows, you'll see what that does in a second. If you hit OK, you'll see that we have the employee ID, which is what we grouped it by. And all simply just grabs you the table for each of those employees. So it's grouped the columns for each of those employees and put them in the cell right next to the employee ID here. So if you look at the tables inside, you will see that in it, it will give you the full list of all the records for the specific employee there. So from here, we can add something called an index, 
which will basically allow us to distinguish the latest record across all of the table entries within this cell. So that's also pretty easy. We can just go to add a column, create a custom column here. We'll just name this one um, ranked all. And then for this one, we're gonna create table dot add index column. Then you'll see it will ask you for an entry uh, table entry. So we'll use the all, which is what we have there. And then the new column, we will just call it rank. We can add a third value here, which is what the value should start with. And let's just say, let's start the rank with one. And if you hit OK, you'll see that it creates a new column with the same table uh, cell, except this time it has a new column rank. And the rank simply does just that. It just adds a rank starting from the initial value that we set one all to the very end of the table. So in this case, for example, you have one, two. And then if we go to Adam, you see one, two, three, which is what we will use to determine what is the latest record for each of these employees. So if we go to Jane Smith's instance here, for example, you'll notice that something is wrong. So you'll see that although we've created this rank column, nothing has changed really, because the rank is still ranking it based on the first entry of those employees. So now what we want to do is actually, we want to rank the first value descending. So we want to rank number one, uh, what is the latest entry value for that employee instead of what is the, the first entry in the table. So for example, like we want the third of January at the very top here ranked as one so that we can filter um, the table to just show us rank one for each of the employees. And to do that, uh, we actually need to go back a couple of steps. So we'll go back here to the change type step here and we'll go to effective start date. We'll do sort descending. It will warn you uh, to insert a step, which is fine. So we'll just insert that. And now what that does is it makes sure that once you have grouped and added the rank, now if you peek into that table again, you'll see that for Adam, you'll see that the latest value entry is the latest record that they have in the system. Same thing as Jane. So you'll see that, uh, that we have the latest record for Jane as number one ranked in this subgroup. So now that we've done all the hard bits, it's now just simply just expanding this uh, new column. So we'll uh, just expand everything else that we have in there. So now that we have it here, we can select everything except the rank one. Let's just make sure that you get the latest record of each of the employees. We can remove this one because we don't need it anymore. And there you go. So you now have a unique list of all your employees with the latest record that they have in the system. Very easy. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now know how easy it is to create ranking within your subgroups in Power Query. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so I know to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.